Good morning. For those of you that do not know me, my name is Brandon. I'm the family minister here at Swiss Cove Christian Church, and I have the absolute honor to be able to talk with you guys for three weeks, which never happens for me because I'm always helping out with kids and, well, not helping, that's my job, but, you know, I'm, I'm always back there helping, doing the kids' ministry and youth ministry and stuff, so I don't get the opportunity to come and speak to you guys for three weeks straight very often, so I'm glad to be able to do that. Welcome if you're here in the room. Welcome if you're online. We are happy that you guys are with us, and I hope that you are feeling happy like me, that we are in the Christmas season Because I don't know about you guys, but 2020 was not the ideal year, and we are able now to drive around and see some Christmas lights, and people are decorating, and the music's going, and it's just, you know, know, another drop of normal in the bucket that feels really good. And even I have been listening to Christmas music, which if you know me, you know that's a really big deal because I don't do Christmas. I even, I decorated, I have two snowmen and a penguin sitting on a shelf. And that's the most I've ever decorated in my entire life. Uh, But I am getting into the spirit. And so it's good to feel in Christmas. It's good to be at this time of the year. And it's the season where we get to celebrate Jesus' birth, his coming. And we're in this series where Jesus came to. And we're going to be going over some statements that Jesus made about himself on why he had to come and why he was here. And obviously, over the next three weeks, we won't be able to cover everything, but we are going to cover some of these awesome phrases. And today, we're going to be talking about how Jesus came to give us something better. And I want to start by talking about one of the close to best things there is, and that's dogs. Dogs are awesome. If you don't love dogs and you're a cat person, I'm sorry. You'll join, you know, the right people one day. But dogs are absolutely amazing. Every dog I see, I want to pet. It's a problem and a good thing all at the same time. Um, and I follow a bunch of dogs on Instagram instead of people because dogs are cuter than people. And so the best dog to follow, by the way, is Bella Blue underscore the Dane. If you just are looking for dog Instagrams out there, that's the one you want to follow. But there's these videos on Instagram and Facebook of dogs where they take two cups and the dog will sit down in front of them. Some people do them with their children, but dogs are cuter, so I watch the dog ones. And they'll take a treat and put it under the cup and the dog has to sit there and they do the cup shuffle thing. People don't do it with treats with kids, they do it with money, um, which is more interesting. And so they shuffle these cups around and the dog has to pick which cup has the treat. And so of course they stick their nose at the, the correct cup and the owner pulls it off and the dog will go to eat it. And then the owner will pick up the other cup, right? And just a bunch of treats will fall out. And the dog's just like, oh. And you know, when they do it with kids, the, the kid picks the $5 bill cup and is like, yeah, I got $5. And then the you know, parent picks it up and there's $200 sitting under the other cup. And they're like, what? And the parents are like, sorry, you don't get this. But, you know, we, we don't always know that something better is around the other corner. And, and this is a situation the disciples found themselves in where we're jumping in today. We're jumping in in John chapter 16. And <clears throat> here it's getting close to Jesus' arrest. And Jesus is constantly telling his disciples, hey, I've got to go. I'm going somewhere else. I've got to go back to the Father. I'm going to die soon. And the disciples are like, whoa, Messiah is coming to vindicate us. He's coming to start a war, like a war with the Romans and free us, and we're going to reestablish this nation. But they didn't understand that the thing that Jesus was coming to free people from wasn't other people, but sin and, and, you know, all that oppression and shame and guilt and stuff. So Jesus is in the middle of one of these conversations where the disciples don't really get it, and that's where we're picking up. John chapter 16, verse 5, if you want to follow along, and it says, but now I am going to him who sent me. None of you asks me, where are you going? Rather, you are filled with grief because I have said these things. But very truly, I tell you, it is for your good that I am going away. Unless I go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. When he comes, he will prove the world to be in the wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment, about sin because people do not believe in me, about righteousness because I am going to the Father where you can see me no longer, and about judgment because the prince of this world now stands condemned." So this is what Jesus tells his disciples as they're curious about, you know, why Jesus is saying these things. And I can't really blame the disciples here. 
If I was standing next to Jesus, the Savior of the world, the guy who created this whole place, if I was standing next to him, I wouldn't think it could get any better. I wouldn't think that he has to go away. If he told me he had to leave so something better could come, I would think the guy took a little bit too big of a sip out of the communion cup. But Jesus tells his disciples that he has to go so the Holy Spirit can come. And without Jesus sacrificing himself the way he did, God's Spirit couldn't rest on us. And there's a simple answer for that. The relationship was broken. And for some of us today, the relationship still is broken because we haven't accepted Jesus as our Savior. And when that relationship is broken, our sin separates us from God. So we can't be in that relationship. But when we accept that gift of the Savior, you know, we're no longer labeled by our sin, but we're labeled by the blood of Christ. And when we accept that gift, we get the Holy Spirit, the guy we're talking about today. And as a Christian, you have the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit, he's a pretty cool guy. I love talking about the personalities of like God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit because they are different and one altogether. But the, I like to pick apart you know, how they interact with us. And the Holy Spirit, we all know this guy, right? He's the guy that sits in the back of the room. He's the guy that doesn't really like to be the center of attention. He's working and moving parts around so that other people can get involved. He's a stagehand dressed in all black, moving equipment, setting the scene so that you know, the, the real guy, God, can come out and do amazing things and put on a great performance. We all know this guy. And I love the translation here in John 16 because it uses the word advocate. We get this kind of glimpse into the Holy Spirit's personality because the Holy Spirit is our advocate. And it, it reminds me of, of nurses, right? You hear that often that nurses are advocates for their patients. They're not the front runners, that's the doctors. But they're the people in the background doing the hard work, keeping people alive, working there, fighting for their patients, fighting and advocating for them. God gave you that spirit to fight for you. It's pretty cool that we have this advocate, that we have someone, that God gave us someone to not be alone in anything we're doing. And I'm not sure about you guys, but sometimes life can be lonely, especially when we're going through hard times, especially in 2020. Like, we've all been there, right? We were literally asked for like 10 weeks to stay alone in our homes, and we all learned that life isn't fun that way. But we've all felt alone. Maybe you feel alone at work because of your coworkers. You don't necessarily gel with them perfectly, so you're not sure if you, you know, can get along with them, so you kind of feel alone there. Sometimes we feel alone at home because we just had that argument with a spouse or maybe your kid is going through that phase of life or maybe you just live alone and home can be lonely. Maybe you feel alone because you look at Facebook and you see people posting all these great things that they're doing. You see all the fun vacations they have and the cute pictures of their kids and and you're sitting at home eating cereal for dinner, and there's no shame in that. I do it all the time. Wondering why your life doesn't have any moments like this that you want to share. I know that we feel alone in our sin. I said it back in August. Sin has one job. And that job is to separate us from God and then blame God on the distance. We all fall into these sinful moments in our lives, and, and they create this shame and guilt. And instead of running to God, we find that we push him further and further away, and we keep running. And after repeating this over and over and over, we look in the mirror one day and don't really realize who we are looking at. We feel alone in our sin. We feel alone in our life. Sometimes we feel alone because we're not sure what's going to happen in life. And I think in John 16, this is where the disciples are at, right? Jesus is telling them that he has to go so something better, the Holy Spirit, could come. But the idea of the unknown was one that they, they didn't want to face. And, and we get that a lot. We start a new job. Maybe we're moving to a new city. We're, we're getting a new group of friends. You know, we find fear and we find loneliness in these moments because we really don't know what is about to happen. And that can be scary for us. And 
don't think that not hanging out with people is what makes you feel lonely. Loneliness has nothing to do with the people around you and everything to do with the comfort of the situation that you are in. And hunting in New York City are perfect examples of this. My brother said, the first time he went to New York City, he said this to me, you'll never feel so alone than surrounded by millions of people on the street of New York City. And then you can talk to anyone who hunts, and they will tell you they feel most at peace, most comforted, and the most fulfilled when they are sitting in that tree stand, all alone, watching nature and looking out into the world. Loneliness has nothing to do with our people around us, but the circumstances that we are in. And I think this is one of the reasons the Israelites were asking for judges and they were asking for kings and and they were constantly looking because they felt alone, right? You know, we see David, the Holy Spirit would come and rest on David and leave David because they didn't have this gift yet. And so there was this loneliness and they were constantly chasing and grasping after this relationship with God. And there hadn't been any repair yet. There wasn't anything done about it. So loneliness... Loneliness is the problem. This is why Jesus had to leave. To give us something better so that we wouldn't be alone. So that we could have an advocate to fight for us. So that we, when we mess up, when we fall short, when we're dealing with something, we have someone to celebrate with. We have someone to walk through it with. So as Christians, if we have the Holy Spirit, if we're not alone, why do we still feel so lonely. So let me ask you this. What are you doing to walk with God? What are you doing to be less alone when it comes to your relationship with Jesus? Because we see all through the Old Testament and even the New Testament people grasping for this relationship with God because they're alone. Maybe that's the same reason we feel alone is because we're not grasping at a relationship with God. You know, you might feel alone in your faith because sin has created that gap that we talked about. So today, we want to go over some simple ways to make God's presence in your life feel and be better than it's ever been before. We're talking about that gap. And if you don't have that gap, if you're not dealing with a sin issue, if you're not dealing with growing closer to God... That doesn't mean this isn't for you because these are the things you need to take to other people, take to people who are dealing with this gap and help them to close it. So the first thing we have to do is we have to pray. Have to, have to, have to pray. If you are not praying, you are not going to be able to be in touch with the Holy Spirit. You are not going to be able to have a successful relationship with God. The relationship with God requires us to open up to him. It requires us to be able to look at our life and spill the tea. Let God know what's going on. How often do you share with God your failures? How often do you share with God your successes? How often are you asking God's spirit, the Holy Spirit, the something better that's coming to be at work in your life? Are you giving the Holy Spirit room to do his job? Without getting in touch with God, you can't get that working. It's just not going to work. No matter what you do, if you're not getting in touch with God, it's not going to work. So if prayer is your struggle, I'm going to give you something that you can do that will help it, and that is to start a prayer journal. Start a prayer journal. And don't mistake start a prayer journal for I'm going to say I'm going to start a prayer journal, but I'm not going to. No, it's either do it or don't do it. But if you want to increase prayer in your life, if you want to get this connection with God, it's time to start diving in to that relationship with him. So on your way home, there's a neighborhood Walmart. Stop in, grab a journal. If you're more digital and younger, you know, pull out your phone, download an app. There's diary apps, there's journaling apps, or you're an old soul like me who still likes to write things down and uses both because sometimes I want to use my phone because I am young and sometimes I want to use you know, a piece of paper because I don't like phones. But either way, download something, get into a prayer journal. I tell my students all the time, write a letter to God every day, what, everything about it. Write what went wrong, write what went good, and ask God to help you with all of it. Because God's not going to be able to work in your life if you don't open up to him. You have to pray. On top of that, you have to listen, or you have to let God speak. God speaks through scripture. The Bible is an amazing tool to get to know who God is. 
and I'm talking about his personality. It's a good place to get to know who the Holy Spirit is, talking about his personality, the guy that we're actually in a relationship with here. You want to know more about how to go through what you're dealing with? Open it up, start reading, because there's people all through that book who went through the things that we are going through. And we get to watch God interact with them. We get to watch God's spirit interact with them. We can let God speak by opening up this book. If you're dealing with that loneliness, if you're dealing with anxiety, if you're dealing with depression, if you have an addiction, the book has the answers. The Bible is the, has answers inside of it on how to get through this stuff. And when you pray and when you listen, you're allowing the greatest advocate ever to come into your life and begin fighting for you, to come into your life and start speaking to you and with you. It's absolutely incredible. But once again, if we don't open up to God, if we don't open up our words to him and then let him speak back to us, there's no relationship there. We all know that relationships are not one-way streets. So we pray and we listen. And, and if reading your Bible, if listening to God is something you struggle with, Elliot posted a really cool thing this week on Facebook. Uh, we're actually, as a church, going to be reading through the Bible on version together uh, this year, starting in January. And if you want to join that, it's on Facebook. You click a button, and it will take you to the Bible app, and it will join you up, and you can read along with all of us who are going through it. Uh, it was up for not very long, and I had clicked on it and joined it, and I, there was already like nine people in it. So if you struggle with reading scripture, this is your solution. If you struggle with prayer, grab a prayer journal. And that brings us to the last thing, and that's to tell someone about God. Tell someone about him. This is the part of the Holy Spirit I love, because remember, he's this stage performer, right? He likes to move pieces so that God, so that we can point to God, so that we can do amazing things for God. And so when we start talking, this is where the Holy Spirit shines. And you've probably seen this in your own life if you've talked to people about Jesus. You start sharing Jesus with someone or faith or even just counseling someone. And in the middle of this conversation, you have this third-person experience where you're looking at the words you're saying and you can hear them and you're not really sure where the words are coming from because you know that you can't give advice this good. But that's when the Holy Spirit begins to talk. That's when you start to see the Holy Spirit pointing your life to Jesus and using you to do amazing things for God's kingdom. Because Jesus didn't come to just save us from our sins. He came to bring us into a part of his story, to bring us into something bigger. Your story alone will never be as significant as your story with Jesus Christ. And so if you want to join into that story, you have to open up. You have to pray. You have to to listen, and then you have to tell people about what's going on. You have to tell people about God. Telling people about who God is and what he has done is the peak of our purpose when it comes to our faith. And this looks different for everyone. Yes, it is going to work in telling our coworkers and the people around us, but some people do it by teaching small groups to elementary, preschool, middle and high schoolers. I can help you guys do that too if you need to. Um, you know, some of us lead small groups. Some of us lead discipleship groups. Elliot runs a great discipleship program and is in touch with all of our life group leaders. We're here. We're ready to help you work for God's kingdom, to help you become a part of this bigger story. But Jesus, God, didn't give you Jesus. He didn't give you the Holy Spirit so that you could bring it in and hide it for yourself. God gave you the Holy Spirit so that you can give him to someone else. It's incredible. And this is where we find our purpose. This is when we find fulfillment, is when we finally reach this last step and start sharing the good news of what Jesus has done. When we focus on our relationship with God, when we open up and we let God in, the Holy Spirit gets to set up the scene to do incredible things. Here at The Cove, our entire vision is next steps. We want to help you take your next step of faith. And that's why we plastered it in a big poster in our atrium wall, because we mean it and we want you to know it. And if these are things you're struggling with, if you're struggling with prayer, if you're struggling with reading, if you're struggling with telling people about it, maybe you're feeling lonely, 
Maybe we're not there yet. We are here to help. Our staff emails are super simple for this reason. Mine is its first letter and last name, bwarren at swisscovechristian.com. Tim's is ttedrick at swisscovechristian.com. And if you can't remember that, you can just email hello at swisscovechristian.com, and we will help you with whatever you need. There's cards in the seat back in front of you. They're blue. We want to help you get connected. We want to help you take your next step of faith. So if you're struggling with prayer, if you need prayer, if you're struggling with getting connected and serving and leading people in a relationship with Christ, if you're struggling with talking to people and opening up about what Jesus has done in your life, email us, let us know. If you're online, hop in the chat. Hop over to our website. And don't wait. Just like the prayer journal, don't wait. Don't walk out of this building without doing something. If you have a decision that needs to be made, if you have something that needs to be done, Find us, talk to us, because we are here to help. And when we open up our lives to something better that Jesus came to give us, our advocate, the Holy Spirit, we join ourselves in a story that is so much bigger than our story could ever be. And I don't know about you guys, but I want to be a part of that story. If you need your help taking any step of faith, let us know. Let's pray.